Hello, everyone. Welcome to this special election edition of News Now. I'm Roger Colton. Between now and Election Day on April 6th, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing candidates for townwide office. Today, Franklin and I welcome Jamal Saya, who is a candidate for the Belmont School Committee. Let's get started. Franklin, you've got the first question. Thank you, Roger. Um, <clears throat> Uh, Jamal, um, uh, you've been inspired to run for a school committee on a uh, populist platform uh, that the leadership of the Belmont schools were not opening, um, not reopening schools to full in-class in learning K to, th K to 12 fast enough during the pandemic. Um, since the school district has just announced that um, uh, that uh, all the schools, K through 12, will be going back by the end of April. Um, this has made your platform that you ran on a sort of moot. So I'd like to I'd like for you to explain how you're going to trans how you're going to transition from being an activist to an effective policymaker on a committee where members may not agree with your approach or opinion. Um, so I, I, I would, um, I, so the question is interesting. Um, I'm not running because um, um, of a populist view. I'm running because I, I am concerned about how decisions are being made at the school committee. I do not believe that these, that the, um, um, that the plans are as clear as you made it out to be, Franklin. Unfortunately, so we we don't we don't have um, uh, all the students in high school coming back um, uh, when when uh, more than a third of of schools who and in the dis in in in, the, in Massachusetts have already or will be starting uh, full in person by the beginning of of April. Uh, Ultimately, I think the um, what I tell what I tell people and what my candidacy is about is how do you how do you make uh, and hold the uh, the school committee accountable for decisions that they have made? I think it's I think what's at heart of it is that there's been a lack of transparency of how decisions are made. At the heart of it, there is a bit lack of of openness to integrate. Uh, in community feedback into the decision making, at the heart of it is um, is a school committee that believes that they are the experts with privileged information and do not need uh, input from anybody else other than the people in in the crowd. I think I think to call to call my candidacy um, uh, based on the populace I think sells it short. Um, I think the community that is supporting my candidacy is is very diverse um, from all sorts of uh, from all sorts of points of view, um, parents as well as non-parents, mm -hmm. people that see the value of having good leadership and good decision making restored in the school committee. So um, I don't see that my position on my candidacy is moot. I think it's even more important, particularly when we start thinking about, about the future and what we need to still be accomplishing. Jamal, I would like to take you in a little different uh, direction. Uh, I, I wanna ask you a question that has been asked of elected officials and candidates for decades, if not more. As an elected official, uh, should you win, which would your job be? Would your job be to vote to reflect the local opinions of the local community? Or is your job to take that into consideration and vote what your professional judgment or your personal judgment uh, tells you is best for the community? Well, I think um, I think we need to re I, need, I think we need to remember that there's there's a reason why people get um, um, got elected and they're elected based on uh, their values as well as their 
their judgment. And um, what I tell people is really learn more about my values and my process of discernment, because ultimately that's what's going to be the person that's going, that's going to be at the, at the, uh, have a seat at the table that's making decisions on your behalf. I think there are certain things that um, leaders need to compromise on, and there are certain things that leaders cannot compromise on. And so I think what you're, what you're asking is, you know, um, does, is, you know, do leaders make, make decisions in a vacuum? And, and we don't. You have to be able, you have to be willing to, as I said earlier, to reach out to the community, to listen and to incorporate disparate points of views in order for you to understand um, the position, your position a little bit better, but more importantly, um, understand the assumptions that you're making and the biases that you have. And unless you're able to actually, actually reach out to a whole bunch of different points of view, you're really at best acting like a bureaucrat or an autocrat. So sometimes there are certain things that you believe in are in conflict with, with, some, with some members of the community. Your role as a leader fundamentally is to bring the community along with you. Your role fundamentally as a leader is to bring clarity to the things that, are, that, that we, we, we're talking about. Take, for example, the, you know, when we talk about the vision of Belmont Public School, all kids are capable of learning at a high level. Inherent in it is excellence and equity. But what does that mean? How do we, defi how do we define that? How, how, what is the role of the leader to educate the public on why it's important to have one in addition to the other? You can only, you can, you can only do that if you put yourself out there, up, allow people to influence your point of view, but also influence their point of view as well. What I can say is that I've done that in the past in the past few uh, months. If you remember, uh, Desi has been very clear from the very beginning that a safe distance in in the classroom is three feet plus, and it was influenced by or informed by science and data. CDC just recently changed its point of view and said three feet can be uh, used in, in classrooms. That's the role of the leader. That's exactly what Desi was trying, was trying to do and trying to inform the public on what, you know, what, what is, what, you know, what's the fundamental reasons that they're guiding this. Our role as leaders is to do exactly the same. Try, try to clarify to the community and bring them along with us. What are the reasons that Desi is guiding this? not put distrust in Desi or the guidance. And what I've done is I spent numerous Zoom meetings, unfortunately couldn't have face-to-face -face meetings, bringing school community members as well as community members in one-on-one in -on -one and seminars, trying to help understand what are the scientific data that underpins that. That's the way that I think leaders can bring clarity to the, to, um, and leadership to challenging problems. Franklin? Sure thing. Um, too bad this is only 15 minutes. We would get into a, a debate on public policy and how bureaucrats are the true um, presenters of public policy. Uh, bureaucrat is not a bad word. Uh, reviewing your campaign literature, there is one word that is strikingly absent. That word is teacher. While the school committee is a policy making organization, the school committee does meet and collaborate with the 200, 290 FTEs, uh, uh, the frontline workers of the schools. Uh, the school committee, um, uh, the teachers are the largest percentage of the budget uh, because of the, what they get paid in their, and their benefits. Um, and they are represented by the Belmont uh, Education Association, which is a strong voice for teachers' rights. If elected, how will you collaborate with teachers as individuals and groups or as their union? 
And I would like to also ask you a question that has been popping up uh, in social media. Are Belmont teachers as a group overpaid? So Franklin, I'm finding your comments actually quite inflammatory because I'm pretty sure if I go to the, my, my website right now, I'll find teachers all over it. I am a son of a teacher for 45, I'm sorry, Franklin, let me finish. <laughs> I'm a son of a teacher and I know exactly what the importance of unions. My mom worked for 45 years without a union and I know what it means to have a strong union that's advocating for teachers, okay? I, I understand the importance of getting te having teachers um, not only uh, a seat of the table, but listening to the needs of the, of the teachers and that they are the experts in the room. I am not the expert. And I think that's really important. I have been speaking to a number of teachers who have educated, educated me on th their needs and their concerns and their, and, their, and their worries about their children as well as their students. Now, I think the union is, an, again, as I said, it's an important part of, of the conversation. The, the concern that I have is that the school committee have had a, have a, a protracted negotiations with the union that I cannot judge how well they've done in terms of negotiation, but I can only judge it from the inside, excuse me, from the inside. But what I can judge is the outcome of it. And the outcome of it is that there's been incremental changes requiring months to actually get get to resolve. That says to me that there is a, there's a breakdown in leadership on both ends in trying to reach a, a place that is equitable to both teachers as well as, the, as, well as, the, as well as students, as well as the community. Jamal, as, as a person on the outside at this point, what do you believe is the least understood aspect of the job of being a school committee member? Well, I think the part, I think the least, the least, the least appreciated is how much work it takes to actually do, to be a school committee members. I have a tremendous amount of respect to anybody who serves, particularly on the school committee, um, where you're putting hundreds and hundreds of hours not only not only in in meetings and trying to trying to uh, attend various subcommittees etc but also talking to community members and trying to represent their views um, so I think that's one I think um, what's also what's also a little bit misunderstood is the the role of the school committee as a proper governing body okay so one of the challenges that we have is that um, the, the school committee in many ways have delegated its authority and its responsibility to the administration. And I think that's part of, part of, the, of the challenges that we have. And, and, and what, what I think is a very, very complex system, right? Schools are very complex systems. Uh, governed by, by state and federal law, um, representing various different points, points of views and needs um, um, of, of parents and students and teachers, etc. And so they're invariably going to be some level of, of um, discomfort between the school committee and the, and the administration. We almost never see that. That says to me that there is a level of governance also that's missing. There's a level of delegation of authority that is missing. There is, there has to be a healthy tension between um, a, a board and, and the CEO. It, there has to be collaboration, but a healthy tension. Without that, there's something missing. Well, thanks for joining us today. Unfortunately, we're out of time. We've been speaking with uh, Jamal Saye uh, today about his candidacy for the Belmont uh, School Committee. You've been watching a special election edition of News Now. Between now and election day, Franklin Tucker and I will be interviewing 
every candidate for a townwide position. Thanks again for watching. I'm Roger Colton. I'll talk to you again next time.